Okay, so let's go ahead and get started in working with object-oriented programming inside of Flash Pro. We're going to create a new project, and we're going to assign it a specific class. When you create a class as attached to your overall project, it's called a document class. Let's take a look, and I'll show you exactly how you can get started. So I have here the welcome screen for Flash Pro. We're going to create a new ActionScript 3 project, just like we've done in any other uh, project in the past. I'm going to create a folder on, I'm going to save this to my desktop, I'm going to create a folder for it. So let's call this, and save this on my desktop, and let's create a new folder. We're going to create a, a small game, I call it Dice Out. I use this for a lot of examples that I, when I teach how to do object-oriented programming. And we're going to call the name of our file the same thing, so Dice Out. Notice how I spelled this, capital D, capital O. We're going to go ahead and save this. So now we have a flaw. It's just like any other project that we've worked with in the past. But we need to create a class that's going to be associated with this particular file. A class is a separate file that's written in pure ActionScript that's going to be associated with this particular flaw file. The class is going to define all the behavior that happens inside of our project. You'll find that when we're finished with this, with this project, that we won't have any action script inside of our frame script. Everything will be done exclu exclusively within the document class or other classes of our project. Let me show you how you can associate this with a class. I'm going to go into the Properties panel, and you'll notice that I have the document selected here. Down here, you'll see there's a field called Class. I'm going to go ahead and, and name this Dice Out. Notice that I've named it the same way that I've named my, my flaw file in the beginning. This is so that I visually, when I look at the files, know that the dice out file, that's the class, is associated with dice out the flaw, that's the project. We can then create the class by clicking the edit button to the next to this, particular, uh, next to this class uh, text entry field. When I click this, it's going to say a definition for the document class could not be found, so I click OK. So go ahead and save this. And if I edit it again, you'll see that I have now a, uh, two options, Flash Professional and Flash Builder. Depending on what products you have installed, if you have Flash Builder installed on your computer, you can use it to create ActionScript classes that are associated with your Flash Professional projects. If you don't have Flash Builder installed, you won't see this dialog box, and you only will see Flash Pro. So if I go ahead and select Flash Pro and click OK, you'll see that the stage is swapped with a, with, a, with a code view. When you're working with actions of classes inside of Flash Professional, the coding environment takes the place of the, of the design time environment inside of the stage. You'll see that there's some code that's already been created for us here. I'm going to save this file real fast. And when you save it, you'll notice that it gives it the same name as the, as the file that it was associated with, in this case, diceout. .as, and .as means that this is an ActionScript file. Let's walk through a little bit about what's generated for us automatically. First, you'll see up here we have a new statement called package. All of your classes need to be wrapped in this object known as a package. It is possible to have multiple classes in a single package, but we're not going to get into that in this series. That's a much more advanced ActionScript concept. We also will have this thing called an import statement. When we created this ActionScript file, we were associating it with the flaw. The flaw, in essence, is one big giant movie clip. So when we use this import statement, it's going to take all that is part of a movie clip, play, go to and play, what's the width, the height, x, y, and it's going to associate all those properties of an inside of our class here. It's going to make them available. The next line on line 6 is where we're defining that we're creating a class. In this case, we're creating a class called Diceout. And Diceout is going to be based or extend another class. Movie Clip is a class inside of Flash Player. So Movie Clip is going to be used as the basis or all of the things that are underneath what we're creating. So now that we've imported all of that information, we're now taking everything that's part of a Movie Clip and we're associating it with this new class called Diceout. So now, when I create ActionScript in here um, in later episodes, all the things are out creating event handlers, changing x and y, and changing width or height, rotation, all those different things that come with a movie clip are now inside of our class here. 
you then will see on line 9, we have a function called diceout. Diceout, this is a special fun this is a special function called a constructor. When you first create a, a class, you're going to be you're going to be executing its constructor. We'll get into a little bit more detail about what this means later on. You also will notice on lines 6 and 9 that we're using the phrase public. Right now, everything that we're going to be creating is going to be public. I'm going to explain a little bit more about what that means in a later episode. So just make sure that when you're writing the code that you make sure that you put public in for now. In the next episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about how we can customize this and then also associate movie clips that are in the library with their own unique class.